Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the New York SBDC's webinar series. I'm Kathy Fitzmorris from the Central Office, and I'll be your host for today's webinar, Get Your Business on the Map. Your microphones and telephones are currently muted to eliminate background noise during the program. We'll take questions and comments throughout the presentation. So to ask a question, just type it into the question box on your control panel, or you can raise your hand by clicking on the hand icon on the control panel, and I will unmute you. You are encouraged to jump in at any time if you have something to add to the presentation. Today's program is being recorded and will be available through WebMQS in the Shared Resources section. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm pleased to introduce Brooke Rouse, former business advisor with the Canton SBDC and currently executive director of the St. Lawrence Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Brooke. Thank you, Kathy. Hello, everyone. So we'll get started here. Um, if you read the description, the presentation is very basic. Whenever I give presentations, I always um, make sure that I'm really speaking to the audience and that they will leave with something. So the, the what we found with e-commerce specifically is that we would bring in all these great speakers to talk about search engine optimization and, and all that good stuff. And, and during a point, you'd see the audience, their eyes just gloss over. So we realized that there is a need for very, very basic information. And this presentation is just that. And I, I'm hoping that We'll put this on MQS, and you'll be able to, you know, throw in your your logos and and go out and present this as well. We've done it in computer labs, which work great on on campuses and such. We've also done it in different community centers where we invite people to bring their computers. So the goal is really, you know, myself as a, a business owner, I go to a lot of these workshops and I write out down a bunch of notes and then I never make the time to implement what I've learned. So when I'm giving these presentations, I really like to uh, be interactive and when they leave the hour or the, or the two hours that they've done something and they can check it off their list rather than leave with a, a list of homework, um, which is also part of it. But So we're going to get started here. Um, I will say a couple things. If you have, I am, I'm not an expert on this stuff. Uh, again, this is very basic, so please, please, if you have some insight that you want to share, do that, and Kathy will update us with different tips throughout that come in from, from you. The other piece is that if you have a second monitor, or even if you want to close uh, or minimize the monitor and, and actually go through these steps. Again, this is a presentation that you can re-give to your, your clients in a workshop, but if, if for practice you want to do it on your own, if, if you yourself are trying to get more familiar with um, getting businesses on map and, and understanding search engine optimization, please feel free to do that, and I will show a little bit of that as well. So. So what, what we typically do, and Michelle Collins has done this workshop with me and, and given it to other communities, typically we're looking at communities that um, really don't have much in terms of business. Uh, they are also don't know too much about using the internet. Some of our communities just got high-speed internet this year, so they're they're really um, behind the times, and we're trying to bring them up to speed and, and get the businesses on the map so that, that it shows that there's activity in their communities. So this is the first step that we, that we do with the businesses, and we just simply direct them to google.com. And the first step is that we choose, you know, a basic um, business that you could typically find in any community and and ask them to to Google it. Um, so I'll, I'll just show you here. This is kind of how we pare down. And in this example, for those who aren't familiar with these locations, um, Saratoga Springs is a bit of a, a larger, pretty uh, busy economic area. Tupper Lake, a little bit less. Canton, New York, even even smaller population and business activity. So the the final location is always the location of of wherever we're doing 
the workshop, just to give you an idea. So, so you can you will want to use things that people are familiar with to say, you know, our folks up here would be somewhat familiar with Saratoga Springs to say, oh yeah, there's a lot going on there. There's there's no way I won't be able to find a hair salon there. And then they might say, oh yeah, Tupper Lake, that's an hour away. I know they don't have quite as much, but but I'm sure you know they're bigger than Canton, so we'll be able to find something and then to get, get down to home base. So I'll just give you an idea of um, you know what the purpose of doing this search is. And again, I encourage you to, to go open up Google and, and plug in this stuff and see what you see. Um, but when someone types in something like hair salon in Saratoga Springs, New York, a number of different things will show up and you can see on my screen there. The point of this is just to familiarize them with with what happens as a user or a customer of this, you know, this service. So I encourage them to look at what search engines are there. So Yelp is popping up here on my search engine. Direct websites are popping up. Um, Saratoga.com, which is a directory. Again, you can encourage people to join chambers and different business directories in their area so that, that they will get that um, recognition online. And then it shows the different um, Google Map listings along with the map that shows all these pinpoints um, basically noting that you have options here and, and here they are, all are, and, and you, know, you can get your hair done in several places. Um, I encourage them to scroll over these different things, see what pops up, if they can see pictures, if they can see maps, if, um, you know, if things look weird or out of place or um, specifically of interest or professional, you know, so it just gives an idea of, of what's out there and how it is represented. You know, I encourage them to scroll through, really, we take some time with this, especially folks who aren't familiar with using the internet to search for things, to really look at, you know, there's yellow pages there, um, Yahoo down here, for, for them to get a feel for clicking around and, and seeing what, you know, what happens when I scroll over a pin on this map, what happens when I click on that, um, those kinds of things. So. You know, this again shows that these folks have gotten their business on the map and this is the kind of visual that you can get from that. So from there, again we started out with a, a larger um, business community moving down closer so we would then do the same exact search um, using the location of Tupper Lake, New York. Um, most likely there would be, you know, less options there and sometimes there are no options at all and I, you can say to your audience, do you really think there's not a hair salon in Tupper Lake? And that's not likely. So that just gives an idea that if you're not on the map and I can't find you online, then in a sense you don't exist, especially for someone in transit or new to the community um, or visit Thing that depending on the service, if, if they can't find it online, it doesn't exist. So it's important to get on the map um, and then take it to the next level to have a professional image and, and look at branding and all that stuff. And then of course looking at, at the, the local area there of, of wherever you're doing the workshop. In many cases, these are communities who haven't done, for what we've worked on, they're communities that haven't done a lot with business development. They certainly haven't done a lot with online marketing. So typically when they're searching their small community by name, um, nothing will show up at all. And so I always point out that basically this is telling the viewer that keep, keep driving, there's nothing here to see. You're, you're not going to get any, any product or service you're looking for here because they look online and it's not there. So unless they're, they're driving around and around, you know, they might just keep moving on to Tupper Lake. So that's the idea. 
So like I just said with, with browsing through, I encourage them to, to talk about you know, what they saw, what they liked, um, you know, which one of these hair salons would they go to and why, um, which search, search engines were showing up, like Yelp and Yellow Pages, that kind of, of thing. And, and then just to simply ask the question, can you, can you find this service in these different communities um, based on what you're seeing and then based on your knowledge of that place. So it, it really gives people a good you know, first-hand knowledge, again, of what, what the consumer is experiencing here. Um, search engine optimization, I always try to just give a tiny bit on that. Again, you don't, wanna, you don't want to overwhelm them with technical terms and all of that, and SEO is, I always say, it, it's an entire, you know, books and everything. It's, it's a, big, a big thing. So I try to just give a very brief definition. I, f I found this and I think I combined a few definitions to, to try to make it as user-friendly as possible for people to understand this. The strategies, techniques, and tactics used to increase the amount of visitors to a website or business by obtaining a high-ranking placement in the search results page of a search engine. So again, still pretty wordy, but Hopefully it means something. I also have this that I can't quite remember where I got a hold of this, but I thought it was kind of a, a neat analogy, and I don't go through and read these things, especially when they're up on the screen. They're, they're tiny, but I typically print out um, this sheet for them. But I, I basically explain search engine optimization as all these little critters that go through uh, the internet and they're looking for good keywords and information and um, you know they're looking for updated information and um, labels and pictures and, and all that good stuff and, and they want to keep moving through to pick up information um, that will then feed into the search engines that people will then find based on a number of things such as keywords. So again, I try to keep that really brief um, and just explain it in those, those terms that, that help understand kind of how that works. So after we did that very basic Google search, I then encourage them, again, everyone's at their own computer, to search for a business that they know and use that is not their own. Um, so I ask them to, to search it by the town and just the keywords. So for example, you know, soup in, in Tupper Lake or, so they have something, they have a business in their mind such as, you know, Joe's Soup Shack. They know it's on this street in Tupper Lake, but they, they're not typing in that specific information. They're, they're trying to find that business by keywords. So again, give them the time to, to click in those different keywords. Soup, gourmet soup, soup on the go, um, you know, interior painting, exterior painting, you know, what kind of keywords lead, finally lead them to that business that they were thinking of. Is it on page one? Is it on page two? You know, how does it look? All of that stuff so that they can then bring that that bigger picture looking at Saratoga Springs closer to home to say what, you know, how does this actually work um, with a business they're familiar with. So they, they kind of go through that process again, give them, give them time to do that. You want them to, to click around, click in, and then the, after they do that for a little bit, then I encourage them to then type in the specific business name that they were thinking about before with those keywords and the town name. So, you know, Joe's Soup Shack, Tupper, Tupper Lake, New York. And so they would go in and, and see if that brings it up. Typically it would. Um, if it doesn't, why not? And then to see, um, again, does it come at the top? Is it on page three? What search engines bring it up? All that, all that stuff that I talked about before, just getting familiar again with what kind of listings matter to different industries and all of that kind of stuff. 
So then I just encourage them to, you know, keep the conversation going, interactive of what, you know, what did they see, how hard was it to find um, what they're looking for. You know, we don't want to call out any any businesses specifically who are certainly doing a poor job, um, but to to in general talk about what what they found, what was good, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I plug in there how far was the business from the area selected. So often we'll have someone write in, um, you know, hair salon Tupper Lake, and it will come up as uh, the closest hair salon being, you know, in Lake Placid, which is you know, almost 40 minutes away. So, and then you ask, is, is that really the closest hair salon? But for somebody going by, or looking on the internet for that service, they're going to say, well, I can't get my hair done in Tupper. I guess I'll, uh, I'll make a trip to, to Lake Placid and I'll get my hair done there. So that's obviously not what you want. You want people to find your business and stay in your community and, and shop there. So, uh-oh. How did my power go out? Sorry, hold on one second. So. If you want, I'll give you a minute here while I get my power strip, and if there are any questions, Kathy, I'll, I'll be back, I'm very sorry, in one second. But if you want to um, click around on your search engines to see, um, kind of practice what I just went through, I'll go back to that slayer and you can get a feel for that. I'll be right back. Um, no, we didn't have any questions. I was just trying to ask people uh, if they use this with their clients just to, to see what the competition was doing, and we did have some people say that they did. Good. Yep, that's a that's another great tool for it. Um, and the way I like a lot of these communities, we're trying to develop uh, a business network of collaboration, and so. I always say the more activity there be um, on the map of that community, the more people will come there because they'll say, well, there's a lot going on there. So really try to encourage them to work together to, to get, uh, you know, get each other on the map so that you get a lot of those pinpoints. So, all right. So moving on, the, the next thing, so once they've looked at broad picture business they're familiar with, then I ask them to go in and Google their own business. Again, just using keywords as they did before, um, haircut, soup, paint, um, by the town. Just that alone, click through several different keywords to see what leads to their, their website or their listing and what search engine actually pops up and, and how they look there. And then to move more specifically, to, to plug in their business name and the town and see if that does show up. I'll also often encourage them, some, some businesses are you know, in a hamlet in an area, you know, there, so the location might be many different things. Just because their street address says something, that might not be what a consumer associates with their business. So I try to encourage them to, to Google those various locations that might not be the exact address, but, but within a region or a, you know, an area or however, again, visitors or anybody might search for the business to see if they show up that way as well. 
So again, we go through this process. It all seems repetitive. It's very repetitive and basic. Um, remember, hopefully they are all sitting there, clicking through, clicking through. We typically walk around, encourage them, you know, if they're sitting there, to say, you know, keep clicking. What do you see? And, and so it's very interactive, and people are typically chiming in along the way to say, oh, this is interesting, or wow, this looks nice, or so-and-so is not here at all. I can't find them, and I know they're down the road. So, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a fun interactive thing, and you can really see the wheels turning as they're going through this process. So for me, this is the easiest way to show what search engine optimization, or it doesn't really get into optimization, just what, what searching online um, means, um, and then in their own business sense. So these are some, some things then we turn to get them. Uh, to actually register so that their business can get on the map. Uh, I was telling Kathy we put together a little booklet that we hand out at these workshops that we will um, put on MQS as well. Again, you can just you know edit. I'll, I'll do it in a Word document so that you can go in and replace the logos and add or edit. A lot of this information changes. They did it six months ago and then we just did it a couple months ago and I had to go in and make sure all the links were still appropriate and that kind of thing and already it's probably changed so uh, it's always good to check that stuff again but that will be up there it's a little you know uh, one paper fold thing that's quite handy and useful again try to make it really easy for folks to move through so these are some things that I typically give either for homework before the session or in the booklet this is outlined so that they can start to think about the information that they might want to have in this um, in this profile they're creating for the map um, I also encourage them to do this and sometimes do it on a Word document so that it's easy to copy and paste multiple times as they're going through multiple listings. I always encourage them to have their listings, if it's on Yellow Pages or, or Google or Yelp or whichever listing, that it's consistent because it creates a brand when people see you know, the same logo, the same kind of language from, from place to place. They, they recognize that that there's been some effort put into to marketing in this way. So, so these are some basic things that your clients can, you know, have on a, a disk saved when they come, or things that if they don't have, they can follow up with that piece of the homework. But even with photos, you can have them write down some ideas of, of what type of photos they might want to take or pull from their files. So these are some tips on setting up the profile. Um, we recommend using a shared business email address so that uh, you know it's not it's not brook at gmail.com. It's the actual business address that if you switch over and have someone doing your marketing or someone doing your social media, that it would be appropriate. Or if that person leaves the business, that it can the information and the updates will continue to come to an email address that can checked. Um, some, some advice on what kind of photos to use, logo obviously, exterior, interior, close-ups of your products and services, um, and also um, try to encourage them to label the actual photo file with some keywords because they will pop up in anyone else goes on and ever does Google images for things like that, but those those photo labels sometimes pop up on Google, Google images, so that can be another way to, to get the word out there. And then you want to identify specific and broad product and service categories, so really some people will get down to very technical terms with whatever type of service or product that they're offering, and I always say, is that how someone would search for your product? Would they call it that? Would they even know that name? So really try to push them and look over their shoulder as they're doing it to say, you know, think about your audience, who's your audience, what, what are they going to plug into Google.com? So, I always start with Google Places um, as the first place to get on the map. 
because as you saw before, I was doing within Google, but typically I always encourage people to um, to go start with Google as a first start. So again, in the little booklet we hang, hand out, this goes through step by step, very, very, very basic of exactly what you do. Plug in this exact um, URL and click here, click here. And, and go through the steps. The verification process is a bit tricky uh, and it seems to be changing. So this is something in your workshops you kind of have to, to roll with it. I would also encourage you as business advisors before you do this uh, workshop to go through this process and get your SBDC on the map. Or if you have another business or go through it with a client to to kind of see it again as a user so when you're talking the others through it you you are familiar with it but basically the verification process because you're going on the map they want to ensure that you are actually there at the location that you're you're typing in an address for so sometimes you'll you'll click in something and you know you'll you'll click in Joe's soup shack and it will pop up on the map, but there will be no information. So typically there's there's a little tab somewhere at Joe's Soup Shack that says, you know, manage this listing or is this your business or claim this listing. So if that's the case, if Google's already recognized the business for whatever reason, um, you can you can claim that listing. And that is typically you'll get a phone verification. So you'll get a call or a text and with a code to verify um, that business. And then the other piece would be the postcard verification. And I found typically if the business is not recognized already somehow, they will send you a postcard to that mailing address to verify that you received it at that location, which then verifies that they should put your business on the map at that location. So that's typically the process. Uh, you cannot plug in a P.O. box, obviously, because they're trying to get you on the map. Um, and so that's how that goes. Some of our rural communities don't have um, delivery, postal delivery at their at their location, so that's been a bit tricky. Um, we've been able to get around that by typing out the the letters and numbers of PO box with the other the street address. Uh, if anyone else knows a trick to get around that, I believe there's also an option to click a, a service that would be so that you you can get on the map as servicing a region. Um, but you don't necessarily want people showing up at your home-based business, for example. So there is an option to do that as well. So these are the, the startup, you know, the, the basic login to get, to claim your listing or to set up your listing. Um, just some more tips we give. You know, make sure that the map location is accurate. Sometimes they'll have it down the street a little ways. Um, you can drag that pin typically to, to line up appropriately one side of the street or the other. That all matters because Google's linked to different GPS systems and things that people are using on their smartphones. Um, I always encourage people to put as much information as they can. Use keywords in the descriptions. Um, that's, that's the time to do that. And, and Google will alert you. You're 70% done with your profile or whatever, so you can go back and complete that, add your pictures, add the other stuff. Um, and always connect to the website or if you have a Facebook even or any kind of blog, you know, if you can plug in a URL there, that's good. Some more tips, um, you know, obviously keep, keep your listing up to date. As, as contact information changes, try to get in there and update things every month or every other month or more frequently. The more they're changing photos, the, the better, you know, the, those little bots we talked about will crawl through there. 
their listing and check things out, so update seasonally or, or whatever. Um, and then direct people towards that listing. You know, send out send out an email or post it on Facebook that we're now on we're now on Google Maps. Go check us out. There's the option to review. Um, you know, it's it's good to have friends and family give feedback um, and customers, obviously. But just the the fact of going in and and clicking and all of that shows shows good activity to those bots again. Um, you know, frequently, I always say to people, frequently search your business like we did earlier in the presentation and see what other, you know, there are new search engines popping up all the time. Go and search, check out those listings, try to see which ones are popping up at the top and focus on updating those listings first. Get your photos on, your logo in, um, your description, your contact information, all of that stuff. You know, anytime you're, you know, You've got some spare time. Go in and say, "I wonder if if they can find me." And the other thing is that depending on the location of where you're you're plugged into the internet, if you're you're with family on vacation in a in a different state, go in, see what pops up to see how you look there. So often, if you're searching from your your home computer for your same thing, it'll it'll show up the same. But if you go go to the next town and log in from the library or something like that, it will you'll have a different view. So that's good to see. Again, you always want to think about how how is your customer viewing you. So that is the very brief presentation for re-presentation. And um, like I said, we're going to upload this as well as the workbook and we'll do it in editable form so that you can make it your own and go out. Um, tips on just holding the presentation, you want to make sure whatever workshop space you're in, your venue, if it's a computer lab or a community space, that, um, that obviously you have the internet access set up. And the other thing is that none of these search engines are blocked for whatever reason sometimes. Um, elementary schools or high schools have certain uh, things blocked, so you just want to make sure when you're choosing your venue that you have pretty open access to this kind of thing. Um, and then that you want people to bring their files on a disk or email them to themselves. They also need to have their own email address because there's, there's verification through email on a lot of this stuff. In the booklet, I've also included the step-by-step -step for Yelp which is also specifically good for um, eateries and lodging. A lot of reviews go through Yelp, so those are good for those uh, types of businesses. And then I have another list on the back of this little workbook that has about 10 different search engines and the specific login to create your listing. Again, those might be outdated. You always want to check that before you print out that workbook. But you know, it says yellowpages.com forward slash business or whatever the exact thing is so that they don't have to go into yellow pages and try to click around to find that. They get the direct link to go in, add their listing, or update their listing. And so I, I typically go through with the client circle a couple that would be most beneficial to them and say, you know, if you can hit these three, update those, you'll be in really good shape. Um, obviously, any any attractions, restaurants, uh, lodging, TripAdvisor is key as a search engine to make sure they've got great pictures and all their information there. So depending on the industry, there are some that are, um, that are worse for different businesses. So that's all I have. I'm very open to anybody who has feedback or tips that they have, that they have found out from working with clients, or they just just know more, um, or questions. Um, let's see, Glamis has a question about online selling venues. Um, do you know of any besides Amazon and eBay? Yeah, there are a lot of venues for selling online. Um, that could be an, a different presentation for sure. Um, I'm not an expert on that. I work with a lot of artisans here, and so I have some examples of 
of places that those folks sell, such as Etsy. There are a few other ones. I always encourage people to, to look at the options, what the fees are, what they're getting for that. Um, but I guess depending on the type of products, there, there are quite a few. And I personally, I use Google a lot. Uh, and you can go on and say best, best um, platform for selling. X, Y, and Z, and there are always different uh, online markets coming up. And does anybody have any other, I've got another comment, oh, oh, Blama says thank you. Any other questions or any comments or anyone want to add anything to what Brooke has presented? I'm not seeing any other questions coming in, um, but so I think we'll be we'll finish up for the day. So thank you very much, Brooke. I appreciate it. And again, everybody, we will have this uh, in share, uh, shared resources of MQS along with the booklet that Brooke has mentioned. And I'll probably I'll have the this recording and the presentation probably up by tomorrow. Anything else? <laughs> get to that booklet. I'll have to find where it is in the files. But I'll get that to you soon. And thank you, everyone, for logging on. And thank you, Brooke. I appreciate it. Have a great afternoon, everybody.